If you're a fan of Western movies, you are soon in for a treat. A project to film 12 Westerns in 12 months is underway, and believe it or not, it's got some deep roots right here in Mississippi. Joining us today is the mastermind of this massive effort, filmmaker Travis Mills. And you'll remember Ward Emling, the longtime director of the Mississippi Film Office, who worked to bring movies to the state. Well, now that he's retired, he's found a new career in the movies. <laughs> Man, welcome. Uh, number one, Travis, I'm surprised you have time to even come and sit down and talk to us today. Hey. Good grief. 12, 12 <laughs> movies in 12 months. Okay, so the dictionary opened it up to hardest man, the hardest working man in show business. That would be you. Yeah, Tom Cruise than me, maybe. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> there you go. Same, same pay scale, right? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. But congratulations, and, and it's kind of neat you. that you're going to be you're here in Mississippi to do some of the movies too. That's yeah, great. absolutely. I love making movies in Mississippi. Yeah, and you've got roots here too, and that's I think that's what's kind of a neat part of this story is that how you came to find. That Mississippi was a great place to shoot films. Absolutely, yeah. My mom is from Brookhaven originally, yeah. and my grandparents lived there. And then before that, our family goes back to Monticello. So oh, we wow. have yeah. we have deep roots in Mississippi. And um, in 2016, I came here and made a movie. Yeah. And it was kind of just a supposed to be a one-off, and then it was successful on an independent scale. Yeah. Successful. And uh, that just led to more and more films. But one of the things that I remember reading an article about it when you came in is like the whole community just got behind you. I mean, there's like people were volunteering and they, they, it was like, a, it must have been a big deal when you were shooting. Oh yeah, well that was the difference in making films in Mississippi versus Arizona yeah. is that people here take ownership of the towns that they live in, that their families are from. So when you go make a movie there, they really care yeah. about that from a community aspect. Yeah, I heard you met the uh, director of the, f the film office here in Mississippi, and he was actually a decent human being. <laughs> yeah, he came down on... Uh, he actually took the time to come down? Look, he wasn't I, at a Yankees game? No, he drove to Brookhaven <laughs> on a r very rainy day for this yeah. launch, and just it was kind of random that we got him there, but yeah. That's how y'all got to know we each first other. Met. Yeah. That's where we first met. Very cool. And, um, uh, I love this filmmaker because he makes films. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the things that we always needed were, you know, a filmmaker who would make films and use local people. Yeah. And, um, and he did it. And you look at these films and you see really good performances in yeah. those films. So uh, that just helped even more, you know, creating the actor base and... Right crew base so well that's always a big part of it too is having not only you think about when a movie comes here but it's nice to have the you know the sound stage the people that actually know how to do to operate the equipment and so forth and i know we've you and i've talked about that for years whenever mm -hmm. you would come on my radio show but mm -hmm. it was it's important to have that to have that base here and we kind of lost it a little bit and yeah looks, yeah we yeah, did yeah, it looks <laughs> like we're well, but we and we got the tax incentive came back, didn't it? Yeah, that the yeah. non-resident which went away two years ago came back this yeah. year, yeah. and uh, and that'll help. But we lost a lot of ground, right? Um, right. In in those two years, not so much with other states. We just lost a lot of crew. Yeah. And yeah. so you have to build that back up. Yeah. And um, so, you know, it'll happen. But this okay. will help. It definitely <laughs> will. Yeah, 12, 12, 12 movies, twelve months, and. You were talking Bastards Crossing is the first one. That's going to be in January. Yes, sir. Um, and you talk about crew and you talk about things. And this was a little aspect of it that I never really thought about, that you've actually got a horse, a person to teach the actors how to ride horses. Oh, yeah. That's pretty important, isn't it, in a Western? Well, I learned a hard lesson when I made my first Western, which was yeah. made in Mississippi, Blood Country. Yeah. I asked all the actors, hey, can you, can you ride horses? Yeah. And they all said, of course, well, of course. yes. Actors yeah. will always say yes yeah. because they're worried about... Because they want a job. <laughs> they worried about losing their job. <laughs> right. And then, of course, the day the day of, it gets whispered in my ear, like, these people have never rode horses before. Like, maybe they, they were on a horse at some point. And I was like, great. And, uh, you know, we, we may do. Right. But this time, we're not making do. Um, they got to be put through the ringer. I was on a horse the other day being put through the ringer, so... That's how it's going to go. It's kind of like something like Save It Private Riding where they put the actors through boot camp. you got them putting them through horse camp. Exactly. That's exactly, exactly what it but is. But, you know, I think about it. If you're leading a horse and that horse knows that you don't know what you're doing, yeah, that actually become a comedy very Oh, quickly. yeah. Even just walking a horse, you really need some experience and yeah. you need to be comfortable. And the horse is immediately reading 
your deal. Yeah. And if you're intimidated, it's like, I own you. They know. They yep. know. No question is, since um, we have one of the actors of Bastards Crossing in the <laughs> studio with us right, right now, no longer behind the scenes, he's now in front of the camera. That's right. Have you gone through horse camp yet? Not yet. It's what? in December. It's oh, it's in, in December. December. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I will say the first film I did was a, a, a movie called the, Adventure, the Musical Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. This was back in 73, and they shot in Natchez. And, of course, we all, they, you know, they said, can you do this, can you do this, can you do this? And it's like, can you ride a horse? And we all said, of course. <laughs> and of course, I get cast as a character that has to ride a horse. horse. Not only do you have to ride a horse, I had to shoot a rifle from, from the horse. horse. Wow. So it's like, oh, I'm glad these horses are well trained. That was the best part. Yeah. The, the horse just went where it's supposed to go. Yeah. I'm just holding on. So, <laughs> um, but... So are there any blooper reels or anything that we can find on YouTube? No, because it was all perfect. It was, okay, it was all know, perfect. Because that okay. horse was really, really well trained. And I just, like I said, I'm, I mean, there's a lot of footage yeah. um, of me, you know, galloping up. God, I remember that movie, too. That's incredible. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Travis, why, why Westerns? I've always been interested in Westerns. Yeah. Obviously, it's like one of the... It's the only genre, I think, that we've really invented, yeah. you know, or it's oh, our definitely. main genre yeah. as, as Americans. Right. And uh, there's a lot that can be done with it. I really think that, like, a true Western is about the question of justice, yes. moral codes in conflict. And with that, you can make movies about what's going on now, right. set then. And I think it's a lot easier to think about what's going on now sometimes yeah. when it's out of context. Yeah, definitely. Because people don't get offended, you know, or whatever. Exactly. They see that on there. So it, now you and I were talking a little bit before while we were walking down to the studio about some of our favorite Westerns and everything. What are the, what are the ones that really inspire you? Well, the first films that inspired me were the John Ford and Howard Hawks Westerns, yeah. like watching Stagecoach and The Searchers and uh, Rio Bravo and Red River. Those films just really got me. And yeah. then I started to dig deeper and I was looking at Bud Bedecker and Anthony Mann, like some of oh, the guys yeah. we were talking about, who really their work is just just as good. Yeah. And recently I've been studying Peck and Paw, who is an mm -hmm. influence on the Bastards Crossing movie we're making, because his his films, everyone's just so dirty in them. Yeah. And I, I told my team, I said, <laughs> that's what I want Bastards right. Crossing to look like. Everybody just needs to be just several layers of dirt, you know, and, and tobacco stained beard, sorry. No. But, but you got a good point because I mean you look some of the old ones and everybody has perfect teeth and there's like no way everybody had perfect teeth back in 1880. <laughs> right, no exactly. Way. So on that, um, Bastards Crossing is the first one, and of course you've already got everybody cast. So For the most you're part, you're pretty yeah, much the, ready to the, go the on the that. The principles aren't you? are cast. The yes. principles are cast on mm -hmm. that, and so. Talk about some of the, because obviously this is, and, and I said that you're probably as good at planning as you as anything else, because to get 12 in in 12 months, you have to have a process, I would imagine, for each one and have it done in a certain amount of time. So your room, it must look like a crime, you know, something a, a cop would have with all the strings and everything pointing. Right. At what, where are you right now with Bastards Crossing? Well, I work every day on these films, yeah. on all of them. Right. And uh, so I'm doing everything, you know, I'm doing call sheets for Bastards Crossing yeah. right now, which is something that I would normally do, you know, a month, a month and a half in advance, but yeah. I'm doing it right now. So we're doing everything from, from call sheets, uh, conversations with my cinematographer. Next mm -hmm. week we're going to be doing set prep, set design. Yeah. All kinds of stuff. Organizing a table read, working with SAG. I mean, it's yeah. just, it's so many things. And, you know, for these other Westerns, I'm locking down costumes and people uh, locking down which extra is going to be there on, on a film in April. And they think I'm crazy because I'm like, <laughs> yeah. hey, I need 10 extras <laughs> April 12th. And they're like, dude, that's months away. I'm like, I need them. Right. April 12th. Yeah, I, I mean, want to do it now, not in January. I mean, know? you got to figure you got to have lumber d delivered on November fourteenth for for the twelfth movie. I yes, mean, you, you've, you're thinking that far ahead. Yeah, I have to, because wow. while I'm making the films, I won't have as much time to produce right. the future ones. It needs right. to be as as you know set up as it can be. When you're looking to get actors, I mean, obviously you found one, a very good one, I might add. We'll see. Well, I mean, I, see, <laughs> I saw you acting when you were head of the film commission. Yeah, you that's were, right. That was quite, 25 years you of were preparation. Quite, <laughs> you were quite good at that. But, but how do you find your actors? I mean, obviously you throw it into the wind, but where, where do you get your actors from? It's a combination. Uh, you know, we do casting calls. Like yeah. We did a big casting call at the Art Museum here in Jackson on July 21st. Saw about 
60 actors. I love doing it that way, yeah. in person. You don't know who's gonna show up. A lot of times someone shows up, like I made a Civil War movie and this woman in Vicksburg showed up at the Strand Theater audition. She, she was just crossing it off of her bucket list. She had really no intentions to act. Just let me give this a shot. I cast her as the lead female in the oh, movie. Oh, wow, hmm. wow. And most people are like, wow, she's great. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, because most people can act. Yeah. They just need to be comfortable in front of the camera. They right. need a little bit of work. And it's, it's bringing who they are to the film. And really. she had no expectations, so she just came in there and was natural. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, she was a little stiff at first. Oh, yeah. The first time we put her, the first scene we put her on was a battlefield scene, and there's, you know, blank fire going <laughs> off, cannon fire. And she's just like next to the tree, just just not even moving, just just as stiff as can be. Well, and that's natural. Just took yeah. a few takes to get her to loosen <laughs> right. up a little bit. Like, we're running out of the blanks here, okay? You're going to have to. Exactly. We're going to start using live bullets if you don't start picking <laughs> right. up. I should have said that. Yeah. I'll, I'll remember that for the West. Exactly. No problem. You Free of charge on that. Appreciate it. Um, but one of, the th one of the things I love, though, is that you, you were okay and actually probably encouraged them coming in in period clothes. Oh, yeah, for sure. So it kind of gives you a better feel, doesn't it? On, on... Yeah, I mean, it, it shows their passion and yeah. their, their interest in this. And there's a lot of people, just like the Civil War, there's a lot of people that love Westerns and, and yeah. collect Western gear. And if they want to show up like this weekend, we're doing one in Vicksburg. And oh, cool. I, I know that we'll have several... Uh, um, for the these are auditions for the Natchez Trace movie, and we'll yeah. have several uh, madams coming in mm -hmm. in, in costume. <laughs> I can't complain about that. No, no. <laughs> so the Natchez Trace movie has it got a title? Right now, uh, it's a two-part film okay. because it's such a big story. And yeah. to be clear, this will focus on the bandits of the Natchez Trace, the Hart brothers and Samuel Mason, these notorious outlaws. Yeah. And it'll be like Kill Bill Volume 1 and Volume 2. It'll be spread okay. out over two films. Right. And right now, they're called The Wilderness Road yeah. because some of this took place in, in oh, Kentucky. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then uh, The Natchez Trace. So those are the two parts. Okay. Excellent. That actually, I look forward to that because I've always thought the Natchez Trace story was kind of neat. Oh, it's amazing. I, I don't yeah. know why they haven't done more. Oh, no kidding. I it. mean, because it was literally like the only way you could get back to Nashville and like you were probably going to get hit over the head somewhere along the <laughs> exactly. way. Exactly. Or worse. Okay, so some of the movies are in Arizona, which is, I guess, where you're from, technically, right? I don't know where, where I'm where from. Where you're from? I, I, was, say. I was born overseas. Yeah. I grew up overseas. I, I went to high school in Arizona. I started my company there. I am a confused per. I'm an expatriate. Right. Let's just call me that. But you love coming here, though, to shoot the films, don't you? For oh, the yeah. Once you shoot. Yes. Just for all the reasons we were talking about. So, I mean, what, so you're doing 12. So you're going, are you going back and forth between the two places? Yeah, so basically, oh, gracious. I'll start out, I'll make a couple here, I'll go out west, I'll make a few there, and then I'll come back and do some more here. Okay. Ward, you've seen a lot of movie makers in your time. Have you mm -hmm. seen anybody that has ever attempted this sort of thing? No. I okay. mean, not 12 different movies. Right. You know, you, you know that I mean, a lot I mean, of filmmakers... I doing a TV series. They'll I do a series, yeah. or mm -hmm. they'll prepare for a feature that'll yeah. take, you know, all in. They're, you know, right. they're doing the whole thing for a year and a half, whatever. Right. But, yeah. But... Preparing, this is like television. Right. I mean, it is yeah. like television. Except in television, you you even then have more time. You right. have more overlap, uh, and you have more help. You know, yeah. You know, you that's, have that's for sure. two first ads, right? So right. you're point. shooting, you, and it's never done with one director. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah. So you don't, you don't have somebody doing like a B director, B. So it's all you. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it kind of has crazy. to be for this to yeah. work. Well, that's true. For this to work and for it to be an interesting uh, project, right? It, it's the same person at the helm of 12 movies in the same genre. You want the same feel all the way through, too. Or I different imagine. feels. How, okay. how can you, yeah. uh, how much can one person explore the Western in 12 movies? That'll be cool. I think so. I think so, too. Um, so, what's, what's your budget? Because, you know, you see, obviously, <laughs> so you're not going to do a $300 million with. Um, you know, basically industrial light and magic doing right, special right. effects. Okay. I work for extremely low budgets. Right. Uh, budgets that people just don't even think it's possible when I tell them about it. Like yeah. they're just like, that's that's not possible to make a period piece film right. for this amount of money. You know, just to give you an example, we made my Mississippi Western Blood Country for fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. As feature film. Wow. Okay. And it and, looks yeah, I've seen your work too, and it looks 
yeah. very lush and very expensive. Yeah, there's yeah. areas where you can see this is a low-budget film, but yeah. a lot of people that watch it on Amazon have no idea that it wasn't made for 10 right. times that amount. Yeah. And that's great. That's, that's a, a, a great compliment to the work. And so basically, we are making these films for what we can. Yeah. And it's also about being responsible to the people that fund them. You know, yeah. I want this to be sustainable. I want right. it to be something that continues time and time again and that movies lead to other movies like Roger Corman's company. Right. They were successful and that's why he made what produced like 300 movies, right? And I want to keep up that momentum yeah. and that requires them to be profitable. Right. Definitely. Well, and I, I would think at fifty thousand, that probably helps your chances of them being profitable. Exactly. On that, how do you do, like do GoFundMe? Do you have people that believe in your work that write you checks, or just a combination? It's or a, you have a lemonade stand? I mean, I was trying to think. <laughs> of, do we have a number at the bottom of the screen? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hold up a sign. Right. We'll film for food. Yeah, it, it's and you do that. You get food donations. I too. do. Yeah. Yes, the food Definitely. donations are huge. I mean, yeah. it's it's really a combination of a lot of things. The most, the the biggest part of it is investors who have yeah. come in and invested in the work and seen a profit for what they've put in. Yeah. And then on top of that, donations, crowdfunding, uh, local resources. Later today, uh, as soon as I leave here, I'm going to pick up some lumber that's being donated at an incredible discount that's amount. Great. And it's this kind of networking that allows you to make a film for fifty thousand dollars. Well, I've seen when we've had you know some big movies filmed in Mississippi, the incredible pride of the community, and I imagine people mm -hmm. are like, when you're coming in, they're like, oh, how can we help? So mm -hmm. they do bring the food, and they do bring yes. brings or we'll talk about the economic impact whenever there's a movie done in Mississippi because it's it's a huge turnover per dollar. Well, they're it? all different in terms yeah. of what they do. I mean, uh, his films, Travis's films, at, at fifty and under. Yeah. Um, uh, an episode they they spend money in a different way yeah um, and uh, but a lot of it but most of it's going to the community because most of it's going to people who live here right exactly and uh, a big movie that comes in is is uh, is spending again spending money in a different way right. more food hotel yeah. rooms more different right things, but they're bringing more in their costumes. cast and so and they're crew. bringing in yeah. and and yeah. so they're all different there's no I wish there were kind of this one model, but yeah. uh, they all have a different impact number. They all have a, um, they, but they all leave a lot of money. And the, the money thing's yeah. great, and I'll be honest with you, and, and I've seen this just over the 20-something years I've lived here. It's the pride factor that's in there. It's just so cool knowing, hey, you're here filming a movie in Mississippi, and so then mm -hmm. when we get to see it, we look around and go, oh, cool, that's Aunt Edna's house, you know? Mm -hmm. But there's right. that, that degree of pride, and I mean, I think it's really great you're coming here to do this. And, cool. the, and we, what we used to always say in the film office, and I guess they still do, uh, but Nina and I used to talk about the opportunity of every one of these yeah. films. You know, a movie came to Mississippi, and that, that Huck Penn came in 1973 yeah. and essentially changed my life. Yeah. You know, it, 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 that was my film school. Right. And, um, and, and that was a movie that came here and who, who, you know, who knew same thing happened to Nina, same thing happened w to any number of people yeah. that, 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 that are in this industry in this state and, and in other places. But, uh, so we know uh, what we always knew every day in that film office that every film that we worked on, mm -hmm created an opportunity for someone that they never imagined that they would get. Right. So. Jennifer Ogden Combs. Jennifer. She worked on a movie and she just fell in love with it and she, she became a producer. She worked on Huck Finn. Yeah. We that was, both, it was we Huck Finn. We were both yeah. on Huck Finn. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because she said that she was working it and she said, I just want to do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. And she did. So, okay, tell us what are the 12 movies? <laughs> well, there's actually some openings still. Okay. Because I... I a couple of these have not been expected. You know, yeah. like even Bastard's Crossing, this is not my idea. Someone approached me and said, hey, I have an idea. He's a writer. His name's Joe Peavy. He oh, lives see, on the yeah, coast. That's right. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I'm like, look, I, I have plenty of ideas. I'm sorry, right? But if it catches me right, yeah. you know, on the right day, I'm like, wow, that sounds really cool. And I happen to have a old Pony Express station on a property in Brookhaven, you know? Oh, yeah. So let's Ooh. film there. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> But um, the ones that have been decided are Bastard's Crossing in January, Texas Red, which is an amazing Mississippi true story in February, 
Then we moved to Arizona. She was the deputy's mm -hmm. wife, which is a script I wrote years ago. Um, one that I didn't write, A Guide to Gunfighters of the Wild West, which is a comedy western. And then I move on and do mo some more westerns in, in the west, Heart of the Gun, mm -hmm. Frontier, The Slow Death of Frank Prothero. Eventually we come back here and do Turn and Burn, which is a modern day barrel racing oh, western. Mm -hmm. And we do the two-part Natchez Trace films, which will take two months to shoot. Yeah. And then, like I said, there are, I have more than enough scripts. I could make 20 Westerns. Right. So it's about deciding what the right projects are. So I'm kind of leaving things a little open. I really loved how, you, kind of your perspective, or at least your, your target on how to get actors for Turn and Burn. Mm -hmm. You're not looking for actors that you have to teach how to be barrel riders. No, that was a, uh, we talked about it with the writer and he yeah. said, so I would think that, you know, we have to cast actresses and then they would learn to barrel race. I said, no, no, that's a terrible <laughs> idea. Oh, I could only imagine that. Ward, I think, I really, I see potential here. Uh-huh, that's right. Uh -huh. I will not be in the barrel race. Anymore. We'll just have just to wrap you in bubble wrap. He, he can be the announcer. I might be the clown that runs around. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, we'll I will just have not to put you in bubble wrap that. or something just yeah. so that you don't break something. But that's a great idea. And people generally rise to the, the occasion, don't they? Yeah, well, we need to see authenticity yeah. in a film like this. Right. And I don't want to be constantly switching the, the actor out for a stunt person. I right. want it to be look real in every moment. And uh, I, I, you know, acting is difficult on one hand, mm -hmm. and on the other hand, it's not difficult it's not. like barrel racing. Yeah. So, like I said, almost yeah. anyone can do it with willingness, the right attitude, and some training. Definitely. So I think it's gonna be a really cool process, and we're, we're auditioning those people in Meridian where we're gonna be filming, and uh, November 30th, we're doing these auditions, and that's gonna be a different kind of casting call because okay. they gotta show up on their horse and barrel race for us. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So I take it you're not gonna do it like inside of a cafeteria? No. Okay, <laughs> just, that would actually be kind of fun to watch. Oh, by the way, Joe Peavy is how we found out about all this. Yes. Going off of his Facebook page. He's an incredibly talented guy, so I he think is. that's really cool. So, when you do get, I mean, like I said, just the sheer logistics of what you're about to pull off just blows my mind. I mean, I'm, I'm about ready to do this to you. I can't <laughs> no. even keep up with what I'm doing with my, my work for a week. But when you do get finished, where are we going to be able to see these movies? Well, you know, that's going to be the hard part. Making 12 Westerns in 12 months is easy compared to showing 12 Westerns yeah. in 12 months. In 2021, we'll release each of the films. Uh, my hope is month by month. Right and uh, we'll take them on tour. So, you know, whenever I show my Mississippi movies, I do screenings in Madison, in Vicksburg, in Brookhaven, in Oxford, and we'll do the same kind of thing with this. You know, the Arizona films will mostly be um, targeted uh, releases over there in the West, but yeah. I'm sure we'll be doing screenings in Mississippi for those as well. And then they're gonna drop on Amazon and, yeah. and other opportunities like that, hopefully Redbox and uh, big box stores and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and or do you do to like different film festivals around the country too? Yeah, select film festivals. Select ones, it's yeah. tough. But you want to find a festival that really fits in the timeline of release and also yeah. fits the project. Well, when, when it comes time for you to have to come back to Mississippi, let us know. Well, at least Absolutely. get you to do the radio show. That would be definitely be fun. Cool. Or, um, like I said, this is going to be fun for you acting. How long do you think it's going to take? How long is it going to take you for to shoot your scenes? You think? No, it's three weeks of work. You got three He's weeks the, of work? Yeah. Ward is the main character yeah. in this film. Yeah. Uh, he plays a character named Cam Talcott, who is a kind of a rascal. Um, You're a rascal. <laughs> in some ways. He's a decent man who becomes That's gonna be real rascally stretch. and more, more and more rascally. It's going to be a stretch so, for you, know. you, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's three weeks of work, and, yeah. and it, it, uh, it's mostly all in one place, so it's interesting. It'll be fun. You yeah. know, I, I've been since I retired, uh, I've been able to go back on stage where I was trained, yeah. uh, you know, at, at, uh, at, at Millsaps and in London. So it, it's been nice. And so this, this is going to be interesting because it's a film, but it's going to be comfortable because it's in one setting. That's so right. it's like yeah. a play in, in a lot of ways. Right. Um, but um, yeah, it, it's not so much how long will it take to do it. It's, it's getting ready to do yeah. it because it's so different from a play right. uh, a, at the end of the day because it's, it's preserved forever. It's not <laughs> in the moment as a play is. Well, yeah, but I mean, you also have several takes too, so you don't have to. Maybe not at the, well, not well, doing that's all true. that that's work that's, in three, you know. Uh, that's sometimes where you, not. That's where, that's you know, where that's your true. money goes away. 
but the there's got to be a spontaneous room. feel, I would imagine, too. On yeah. Some of yeah. That. yeah, we're going to prep and rehearse to the point where, you know, the actors know what they're doing yeah. and, and their subtext is there. But there always has to be an element of spontaneity. Right. And uh, I love improvising on set and adding ideas. And I'll, I'll, oftentimes the best moments in the movie come from what's figured out right there on sets, the ideas that are thrown yeah. out at the last second. But like he says, this stuff lasts forever. And that's what I tell my crew on every film, crew and cast, the first day of filming, I said, what we're about to do lasts forever. So make it count. Yeah. You know, if you come in on a day and you're checked out and your head's just not in the game, that's going to show. And it's it's never going to be taken back. Oh, wow. Yeah, no pressure. There. Yeah, put no, the pressure. I no like pressure to put the there. pressure yeah, on. Exactly. Yeah, 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 you, know? Sure. you know, that and live ammunition, I think you can definitely <laughs> get, definitely get their attention. Of course, Bill Luckett's going to be joining you on the film, yeah, too. So there you go. Bill's great. So you're gonna, you've got a great cast. I was sitting there looking at all yeah. the characters that you had in there. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Well, with this one, I wanted to, this is the type of movie where every person that shows up has to be clearly a distinct character, yeah. you know? And, and, and you know before they open their mouths, who's this guy? You know, he's the prospector. He's yeah. the burly man. You know, and uh, Bill's one of those presents when you know his, his when his six six frame walks uh, <laughs> into the scene. It will be like, all right, what's this guy gonna do? Of course, everybody knows. You know, Bill's famous for being mayor and you know running for governor and gosh and hanging out with Morgan Freeman and so forth. But he, he's gonna become more famous as, as an actor. <laughs> yeah, so I guess so. Mm -hmm. Well, con <laughs> congratulations, good luck. Like I said, it's gonna be fun watching this process go forward on Thank that. You. But it's, it's really good uh, inspiration to get to meet you. It yeah. really is. And I always good it. to see you too. Good to see you, yeah. good to be here. So yeah. thank you all for joining us today. Sure, thank you. Thank you.